Okay, whenever working on a combi oven, the first thing you should always check is the cooling fan. Uh, in this case, it's underneath the front left corner. Uh, what happens on this specific model here is if the customer calls in and the screen's going funny, the first thing I'll do is check that cooling fan. I've had this happen several times. Um, I'll clean that and then I'll check in with the customer several days later and all those intermittent problems have gone away. So before ordering that front display board or even before updating the software, um, I would clean that first and then check back in with the customer. Uh, it's a good habit to check the cooling fan on any combi uh, when you're going in first thing as soon as you get on site. Uh, here's just an installation of what, how not to install it. Uh, Obviously, they've direct vented this into the uh, for to, to vent outdoors. OK, so gas supply. Uh, it's important that there is no reduction in the gas line. Gas hose should be one quarter inch higher than the gas connection. Gas hose BTU rating is not equal to the black pipe and quick disconnect and swivel elbow reduces BTUs even more. Do not use residential gas hose. Um, as we see, we've been tagging these lately, so if you see those yellow hoses, you put a non-immediate tag on it, uh, send the estimate to the customer, and then get it replaced. Uh, do not manifold two combis together. And the supply pressure should be 5.5 inches water column to 14 inches water column dynamic pressure. All right, so um, this combo therm needs 68,200 BTUs. So if we look up the chart here, and we go to a 48 inch hose, we're only at 68,000 BTUs. So you would either have to go to a three quarter. Okay, so keep that in mind that uh, in this case, if you're running this appliance, uh, you would actually be under the BTU rating, which is obviously going to affect um, your ignition and all, all your gas pressure. So this installation here, uh, the top unit was having ignition problems. As we can see, they used a half inch residential gas line. Uh, obviously, they're not getting the required pressure for ignition. All right, so here's a quick breakdown of the, um, the gas train. All right, so we have our burner controls right here and right here, which is basically our, um, our modules. We have the main gas valve. So this unit actually has a main gas valve and then it goes into the gas valve. We have our Venturi. We have our boiler burner assembly. So this is, we don't see this very often with Cleveland where they have a boiler assembly. Um, most of the stuff is boilerless now. And finally we have, oh, we have the boiler and finally we have the convection burner assembly, which is for your hot air. So your dry heat. All right, it's very important not to block any of the outlets. So we have our air intake. We have our boiler exhaust, which we're not going to see. Um, convection burner flu. And then finally, the vent for the collection box, or as we like to call it, the quenching box. Okay, so this comes with a quick release. So you release this bracket and it actually you can remove the entire assembly. Uh, this is one thing that Cleveland's done very well that the other manufacturers haven't really caught on to yet. Uh, we have our gas valve right here. We have our burner control, which is the module. We have the gas valve adjustment inside here. We have the pressure measurement port. So that's where you check your gas pressure inches water column. Um, you have your gas orifice gasket um, so when you do change a uh, when you change the valve this gasket does not come with it um, neither does the orifice so they need to be removed and then installed in the new gas valve um, so Frank was talking about how he gets a lot of calls for guys change gas valves they forget to put these in and then the oven's not igniting so as soon as he hears someone's changed the gas valve the first thing he asks them is have you changed the orifice gasket and did you put the more importantly did you put the orifice back in okay the venturi adjustment for our co2 calibration our venturi and finally the burner fan
So here we're going to see a real-time picture of it. So we have the hot air or dry heat burner assembly. We have our VFD right here, the contactor step-up transformer, and the burner assembly, boiler burner assembly, um, which, like I said, we're not really going to see. It's rare that Cleveland sells these units uh, with the boiler on them uh, in our area. So the minimum gas pressure is 5.5 .5 inches water column dynamic. Um, so here's our ignition module, our gas valve, the Venturi, and the combustion blower. So here's your incoming, your outgoing. Uh, this is important because we work at a negative pressure. Uh, so it's very important that you know which one the in and the out is. And when you look at it, it actually kind of looks backwards. It's hard to see the markings. You have to really look in there. So um, yeah, keep a picture of this slide and or reference this slide anytime you're looking to check your gas pressure or do a combustion test. And finally, the Venturi adjustment screw for our CO2 calibration. All right, so this is basically how it works. Uh, this burner fan, the faster it goes, the more gas it's going to pull through. And it, it's pulling from the gas valve here, so main gas valve into the gas valve. And through the burner, it's doing its gas to air mixture, and it's throwing that into the burner and the heat exchanger. So here's the sequence. So first thing, when the combi is energized, this main gas valve here uh, will be energized. So um, our manometer is at zero inches water column. So you would be testing that on the out port of the gas valve. You're going to get zero inches. Uh, obviously, the gas valve is not open. Now the control calls for heat. Uh, next, the ignition module sends start speed to the burner fan. So the burner fan turns on. Okay. Once it turns on, the manometer is going to read a negative pressure. Okay. That's telling us the burner fan's on. Okay. Why this is important is it tells you two things. A, is the burner fan working? Usually you can see it. But just say you're pulling into a negative pressure, but not enough of a negative pressure. Two things could be happening. Um, the, uh, the heat exchanger could have water in it. If it has water in it, it's going to slow down this speed of it moving air, and the negative pressure won't be as low as it should be. And then secondly, um, on the little uh, blower wheel inside, if the fins have broken off, and I've seen that happen before, it's just spinning around in there. So you'll feel it spinning. So a good test to do at this point, obviously before ignition, is put your hand over the exhaust pipe right here and feel the airflow. If the airflow is feeling really low, there may be water in this heat exchanger. Okay, so once that starts running, negative pressure, the burner fan sends a signal back to the ignition module. Next, the module will send 120 volts to the gas valve. So the uh, the second gas valve, the gas valve opens. Okay, at this point, your negative pressure is going to go to zero. Okay, this is significant as well because if you get 120 volts on that gas valve and you stay in a negative pressure, either the gas valve's not opening or you don't have any gas pressure. So this is a good way to test the gas valve to see if it's opening or not. So it's I know it's odd that you have zero inches water column is good pressure but that's how this power burner works so once the gas valve opens now the module sends spark to the igniter so we're going to come we're going to send spark there next the burner ignites the manometer is still going to be at zero inches water column uh, the module must sense a minimum of one microamp so it's going to be sensing it off of here. So once 
the module senses the one microamp, the burner fan will go into full speed or max speed. All right, so here's trial for ignition. So we need one microamp DC. Uh, we're going to try for ignition three times for four seconds each. Okay. There is a reset button on the module. So just say we have three trials for ignition, we get locked out. If there's a reset button. Do not press that reset button. It will not do anything. The only way to reset this gas air is to turn off the unit for 10 seconds. All right, so here we're just showing the ground electrode and the flame sense. Here's our sparker and here's our burner. Uh, they call it a burner mantle. This is the basically the burner. Okay, here we're just showing it inside of the oven. Okay, so uh, fan speed is not reached. Oven enters air mode. Burner control makes attempts for ignition three times. The main gas valve supplies the gas valve. If the electromechanical safety trips, the gas valve cuts off the gas supply. So if you're high limit trips, uh, the main gas valve is going to shut off. We're going to lose our 120 volts there. So gas is not even getting to the secondary gas valve. All right, so this is the first generation igniter they had. They were having problems with them. So what was happening as it was heating up, this flange in here would heat up. And as soon as the flange would heat up, this insulator would fall through. Well, once we fall through, we obviously don't have the correct gap here and we would have delayed ignition issues. So what they did was add an extra insulator inside here okay um the problem was it was still falling through so finally they added this piece of metal okay and now they're finding that they're no longer falling through so the igniter uh there must be a gap of four millimeters for correct ignition. So this is the issue they're having. Uh, once that this little insulation piece would fall off or break off that four inches, um, it would get either bigger or smaller, usually bigger, uh, giving weak spark. So uh, they've actually added a heat shield for the larger units. Uh, one igniter for all convection burner chambers. Igniter is malleable. It must be hardened, heated. OK, so what's that saying is um, once we get our gap of four millimeters. We want to harden the steel so that once it gets once it heats and then it contracts that four millimeter gap is going to stay there. So what they want done is after replacing the igniter, the tech must run the convo therm on max setting in the service mode with the door open for 25 minutes before checking the gas valve flu values. Adjust the valve if necessary. OK. So they want a burn in done on this igniter. They want it on max speed and they want the door open. They want the door open for two reasons. First reason is if you're on max speed and you're in service mode. Um, it's just going to continuously hit heat, so we'll trip the high limit. And secondly, what um, why they want it in test mode is if you just set it to 350, let's say um, we're not going to get 25 minutes of continuous heat on max speed. OK, they want the maximum amount of heat on there to harden it. And then at that point, they believe that igniter shouldn't move from that four millimeter gap. All right, so how to get into that mode is press the setting buttons on the home page. You're going to go to service. You're going to enter pin four zero eight four. OK, you're going to go to your gas tab up here. OK, obviously make sure your door is open. 
And you may need to put a magnet in this mode on the door. And this is, um, so right here we're showing the, the fan speed and we're showing um, the RPMs, okay? Uh, we want this to be done at max speed because we want to harden the steel. We want it as hot as possible. Okay, we also have a microamp reading. So all this is really important for, just say you're testing things in real time, you can actually bring up this menu and leave it on the screen in real time. So if you're ever troubleshooting a unit and you're suspecting uh, microamps are dropping or the, the burner speed's dropping, you can actually check this in real time while they're cooking or while you're running a, a test. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the CO2 calibration. So before setting the gas valve, verify the gas setting, the correct gas, the gas pressure, obviously, that's very important. You don't wanna adjust anything if you have low gas pressure. Okay, so if you have a new gas valve, so just say, or not even new, just if, if someone's done the adjustment, you're not sure about it, how you can get it back to the original position is uh, turn it clockwise until it stops all the way in and then back it out one and a half turns. And then on the Venturi, um, it's 10 to 12 millimeters from the casing. I know that's a little bit difficult to measure, but that's if you're way out and you keep turning it and you're like, hey, I'm not, I think I'm way out of the range. Well, you can actually go back to the factory settings by using these values here. Okay, so we adjust the gas valve um, at minimum speed and the venturi is at max so this is a typo here okay and when we're adjusting it uh so just say we adjust the minimum and let's go here to a natural hot air so it's 9.8 okay and just say we're getting 11 okay or sorry it's 9.8 and we're getting 9.8. Then we go to the, we go check on maximum for the Venturi and we're getting 11.4 instead of 10.4, okay? Uh, once we adjust that 11.4, we must go back and adjust the gas valve. So if you go back to the gas valve and now it's changed that 9.8 to let's say 10.8, you must adjust the gas valve now. So anytime you adjust one of them, you have to go check the second one. So we adjust the gas valve we have to go back to the Venturi. If the Venturi is good and there is no adjustment on the Venturi, we don't have to go back and do the gas valve. So this one's a little bit different than the other manufacturers. Once you adjust one of them, the other one must be tested and it must be within the range. Okay, so they did make a gapping tool for that four millimeter. Um, it can be purchased from Cleveland. Uh, ensures igniter rests on notch inside of the tool. Position gapping tool between the igniter and the sensor. Ensure the component fits in the notch. And that's how you get your four millimeters, which I know gets difficult to test when you're on site. Uh, okay, so they're, they have been getting communication errors. Um, what they want you to do is remove the X18 wire harness. Okay, so that is your burner control unit. Okay, they want you to reroute it. So direct it away from all other harnesses, specifically from the communication cables. Okay. So you're going to route it to the outside. You can see it here. They're routing it here on the outside and they're bringing it through here. Okay, they don't want to near any communication cables because what, what it's doing, it's making noise. Uh, it's making interference and um, there's certain boards that don't like noise and they start throwing error codes. Okay, so here we have a unit that the, um, this was actually a video, you can't see the video, but there's steam coming out of um, the uh, Venturi here, right onto the board. What was happening, this heat exchanger was cracked. Okay. So uh, this was actually pretty interesting. Uh, so anytime you replace a Cleveland heat exchanger, they want you to verify the gas pressure so they're saying low gas pressure can cause a cracked heat exchanger 
and verify the water pressure for the spritzer. So if you have high water pressure on the spritzer, that will also cause um, the heat exchangers to crack. OK. Uh, possible additional components are the water regulator and the burner assembly, including the igniter. OK, so they're saying you may want to change those as well. OK, so they've been having problems with cracked cavity wall at the burner flange. So as you can see here, when you take the flange off and the stud, the studs missing, obviously there's a huge hole. Um, so probable cause loosening of nuts caused by settling gasket results in untightness. Cavity wall is then permanently exposed to cleaning agent and increased uh, increased heat. So what they're saying is if these nuts come loose, uh, the cleaning agent can get in there and they're pretty corrosive for that section because there's so much heat there. OK, so now they want you to start using uh, self locking nuts. Um, and they actually made a repair uh, a repair kit so you can see it right here for if you have a broken stud okay okay that repair kit can also be used for cracks I don't know if you can see that one but we got a little crack there okay so as long as the crack is is not any bigger than 18 millimeters you can install this little kit right here. Okay, this disc spring comes with the heat exchanger. Um, when completing a PM, add washers. So they want you to add washers now to this, okay? Intermittent VFD errors. So this is another issue they were having. What was happening was the orange igniter wire. Uh, it's pretty thin. And we have 10,000 volts going through there. So it was making noise again. Um, and what was happening was it was affecting the VFD. So what the, the solution they're doing for now is they're taking the old silicone hoses off the Cleveland uh, uh, steamers. And they're actually putting it through, putting the, the orange wire through so that the noise can't come out and hit the VFD. The VFD is right here. So what was happening was that wire's too thin and noise was coming off and hitting this VFD. And they kept, they're getting so many inter intermittent errors for that. They're changing the VFDs, still the same error. What was happening was that 10,000 volts just couldn't be contained inside that little thin sheathing that they had. Okay, here's just some pictures of some customers putting pans on top. As we spoke about earlier, you cannot block any of these air intakes or exhausts. Uh, here's just a picture of a heat exchanger became loose, went on the blower wheel, the blower wheel grinded a hole through it. 